ketchup flavored potato chips. If you're ever in Canada, you should try some. One problem. Bum 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 ba da 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 Don't worry, I'll show you how to make them from scratch. Now to begin this recipe, you're gonna need, duh, potatoes. Now clean and peel about two pounds of russet potatoes. Now we're gonna cut these into very thin slices. And to do that, we have a mandolin. I'll leave a link to this as well as cheaper options in the description below. Normally these things come with some sort of safety handle, I lost mine. Thankfully, I came prepared with some cut-resistant gloves. Anyway, set the mandolin slicer to 1 16th of an inch and just cut away. Okay, once the potatoes are all nice and sliced up, transfer them to a bowl full of cold water. Once you do that, toss them around a few times just to rinse off as much starch as you possibly can. Pour out the starchy water and rinse them again just to make sure. Now refill the bowl up with water, this time toss in about two tablespoons of salt. Not only will this help the flavor, but it will also draw out additional starches. And let the potatoes rest for about a good 20 minutes. Okay, after 20 minutes, rinse out the potatoes. Then place them on some kitchen towels. We need these as dry as possible. Kit I'm using kitchen towels because, well, they're more durable, they absorb more moisture. And second off, have you been to the grocery store recently? So put the potatoes on some kitchen towels to dry. Once they're all nice and laid out, take some additional kitchen towels and just Pat them nice and dry. And transfer them to a plate once they're done. Okay, the moment you all been waiting for, deep fat frying. I have here a pan filled with oil. I want to bring it up to 350 degrees. Are you currently trying to stop the spread of a life-ending virus that originated in your country? Even though you're the same morons who covered it up in the first place? The number you're looking for is 175 degrees. Okay, the oil has come up to temperature. Let's add in our potatoes. Don't splash them in. Try to add them in one at a time like this. Also, don't overcrowd the pan either. The temperature is gonna drop significantly and you're gonna end up with greasy chips. Nova, stop barking, you're polluting the audio. Okay, once they're golden brown like this, transfer them to a uh, Cooling rack lined with paper towel. Oh, wait. Bruh. Okay, if you can't find paper towel in these trying times, just use newspaper instead. It's not as good, but it gets the job done. Okay, all the chips are done cooking. Next step, transfer them to a big bowl. And this is what's all about dried ketchup seasoning. I'll leave a link to this in the description. So sprinkle on a generous sprinkling of ketchup seasoning. Give it a nice toss. Oh, now that there's a nice ketchup chip there, eh? And now you know how to make ketchup chips without having to go to Canada. You know, if I could just take the moment to be serious here, the coronavirus uh, lockdown has me really stressed. You know, I'm not allowed to work on my day job, not unless I catch the disease and spread it to my 90-year-old grandma. If you want to help me out, uh, support the channel on Patreon. Link is in the description. I don't want to end on a sour note, so I'll say this. Once we reach 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. Uh, don't expect an iPhone, though. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning it's time. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, smash the like button. If you really like the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Thursday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram and support me on Patreon. Best part about making your own chips? 
You can douse them in seasoning, just the way I like it. 